heard that. Hi everybody, my name is Clay Taylor. I, I'm a birder, I've been a birder since 1975. Started birding actually when I was going to school in Rochester, New York, even though I'm from Connecticut, I know how to say Rochester. Um, and got into birding on the, on the, basically on the, on the Western New York Lake Plains, which was a phenomenal place and have been, been a birder ever since. I lived in Connecticut. Um, Started working in 1999 for Swarovski Optic. They hired me to be their birder. They needed a birder. How about that? They were a hunting company that was coming out with a brand new binocular that was built for bird watchers. And they said, we need a birder. And they found me. Yay. 22 years later, I'm still doing it and still loving it. Uh, in 1979, I first came to the Niagara River Gorge to look for gulls with the Rochester Birding Association. And I literally had this binocular with me. Back then, it was my old Chanel 7x35 Custom Range Masters, which is a phenomenal old glass. And with it, I saw my lifer, Franklin's gull, down below, swirling around with 10,000 other gulls. And that was, uh, you know, that we saw, I don't know, it was, it was at, least, at least eight or nine species of gulls back then, uh, that day. Uh, and Franklin was the only lifer for me. But it was very, very cool. But standing there scanning, looking down at all those gulls, um, you know, you really got to got to appreciate having good good binocular, good glass. Now this was, yeah, you say Bushnell. Nowadays Bushnells are awful, but back in the day, this was a three dollar binocular in 1977, 78. So it was an expensive binocular, and you can see it's kind of a weird shape. It's a it's a poro prism, but it's a very wide field, super wide field. So that for me was great. We're, we're up on the on the, um, uh, the sidewalk up above the gorge, and we're just with our elbows on the on the railing, and we're scanning back and forth, back and forth, and having a huge field of view is a big advantage because you can see more gulls, you can see more stuff, and it's only seven power, sure, but I also had a spotting scope with me. I didn't have this spotting scope. This is my Swarovski ninety five millimeter. I had my little old Bushnell Space Master back then, but I'm a scope guy. So even when I go birding in the woods, I take a scope with me. Um, usually I have binoculars, almost always I'll have a camera with me of some sort, but with me, it's usually there's a scope somewhere to be found because for me, that's what turned me, I, I actually started birding as a photographer. I was going, I was in Rochester, um, but I, I figured out that birding through the camera was kind of tough. So I actually bought a scope first and then finally bought binoculars. So if you're going to go to Niagara Gorge or anywhere bird watching, you know, what binoculars to have? Um, there's no one answer. Um, everybody has a slightly different use for stuff. I don't need high power. I, I usually weigh back in the day, uh, a seven power. Nowadays, today, today, when we're out in the gorge, I have my little eight by 32 NL Pures, the orange ones, just because they're cool. Um, but again, wide field of view, nice, small size and weight. Um, I don't need an eight a 10 power or a 12 power binocular because I got my scope. I look through and I say, oh, there's, oh, look at that. There's an Iceland go over there and immediately go over and start looking at them through the scope and, and doing all that stuff. So um, the bottom line is if you're bird watching, you want to watch birds. So having a binocular is better than just plain old naked eye, of course. Uh, any binocular you have is better than no binocular. Well, most any binocular, because one of the things I see people do a lot is when, especially when I'm taking beginners out on a bird walk or a place like Point Pili or um, uh, McGee Marsh and, and places where you see lots and lots of birders, sometimes you see birders doing this. Even though there's really cool birds around, they're only looking through their binocular about it, about two seconds, three seconds, and then they're putting them back down again. Well, more than likely they've been knocked out of collimation at some point, they dropped them, they kicked them, they you know, fell off a table. And instead of the lens is pointing forward, they're kind of doing this. And we're not chameleons. We can't move our eyes independently of each other. So if the binocular, both lenses aren't pointing straight at the bird, then it's really hard and really painful to look through. So a lot of times when they're doing this, I give them mine and say, here, try mine. And they go, oh, wow, because they're not having to fight them. 
uh, and, they, and they get to see stuff. Um, where you go with, with binocular choice is purely up to you. Smaller and lighter is, is, is very desirable for most people. But when you have a slightly bigger front opening, this is a 32, this is the 42. Um, the bigger front opening means you see more light. Bright sunny day, not a problem. Your eyes close down, but you also see more detail. And so with both of these being eight power, and this is the 32, this is the 42. If I do something goofy like this, I'll see more detail with this binocular than I will with this one, regardless of everything else. Um, so generally the, the heaviest thing you wanna be able to take with you is gonna give you the best, best view. Um, we, we make binoculars with big old 56 millimeter front openings that are just incredibly sharp and bright, but they're big old heavy dudes. Now I have a lot of stuff, so I don't really care. But with spotting scopes, you do have to put up with some kind of a tripod. There's my tripod there. Um, but because type spotting scopes start at 20 power, 15 to 20 power usually go on up to 60. This one actually goes up to 70 power. Fantastic for seeing birds at a distance. Um, and, and it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, a, a, a gull all the way across the other side of the gorge or a sparrow buried in, in a thicket and, and you want to get better details of him, you can just use the scope to see right through there and, and get it. Um, Right here is the is the angle of the straight through IP scope. I had that today mostly because I was doing a lot of photography. So I can slap my camera on here. And this now becomes a really, really good big telephoto lens. I'll show you some videos in a second. Uh, oh, there we go. That makes more sense, doesn't it? Um, most birders have the angled eyepiece because the angled eyepiece is easier to look down into. And you also rotate it sideways for short people and stuff like that. So we, we sell far more angled eyepieces than we do the straight throughs. But um, since our, our spotting scopes have the ability for you to change the back ends, I can change my scope from an angle to a straight as long as I have both pieces in a matter of seconds, um, you get to choose whichever way you want to go with it. Um, the photography part of it is a ton of fun. And you can use any single lens reflex camera. So as long as it has the ability to change lenses, we actually make our own lens that goes on the camera and is essentially designed to, oops, there we go, replace the, because human eye needs to be behind a scope eyepiece. If I just were to point this scope at a bird, put a white piece of paper behind the eyepiece, you don't see a picture of bird on the white piece, white piece of paper. You need another lens behind that eyepiece to focus an image. The makers of the scope are assuming that we're gonna have this lens right here, our, our human eye, and the sensor is the retina. Well, we can, we can correlate that to a camera, digital camera, where the sensor, the retina is, is now a digital camera sensor. And we actually made our own lens to lock on here to be able to get you good stuff. So what is it? So my scope is a 30 power to 70 power visually. When I put my, my camera on here, it starts out at about 1300 millimeters and zooms to about 3000 millimeters. So it's a pretty neat system and it works really, really fast. So the great thing is you're standing there by the gorge and all of a sudden some gull comes flying down and lands on the middle of the water way out there. You can quick put your scope on it and say, oh my gosh, look at that. That's, oh my God, it's a Ross's gull. We gotta get a Ross's gull. You know, slap your camera on there, boom, 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 get your pictures, get your videos, all that cool stuff. And if you're not an SLR person, I keep swinging my scope around here. Let me just do a dining room reach here. Uh, well, you can also do phones. There are many different adapter systems for cell phones to be able to go onto your scopes, which is a lot of fun. Um, and depending on what you want to get out of your pictures, you know, if it's if it's shots for to prove you saw what you said you saw, cell phone is fantastic because it'll just pop right on there. You can shoot stills, you can shoot videos, you can trap a frame out of the video, you can do high speed videos uh, with, with, with slow motion, uh, all kinds of cool stuff, and depending on how serious you are with, with doing the whole phone thing, uh, a lot of people are actually getting a second phone. Because if you, if you have your regular phone phone that you talk on and do data with and all that stuff, you have to keep taking it in and out of, of, out of a, a case. It's best to have a case that you can be able to just attach to the scope. This, this phone right here was my wife's old iPhone that she was going to trade in. The, the phone store was only going to give her 50 bucks for it. I said, no, give it to me. Because now this is my dedicated scope photography phone. And we don't have to do phone uh, uh, service with it. It's not for making calls. It's just for taking pictures and, and doing airdrop 
over to my to my computer and be able to do stuff. So um, that's a lot of fun. So today, um, uh, when I got into to Niagara Falls this morning, we, we did do a little bit of uh, bouncing around, uh, looking at places to go. This weekend, I'm going to be Friday and Saturday. I'm going to be probably Goat Island, Three Sisters Island, somewhere in that neighborhood, have a couple scopes set up, have a bunch of binoculars to play with. You can play with the little orange guys. Um, and if you want to come by and, and A, see the birds, B, play with the photography, C, do the phone stuff, I'll be around. And hopefully I'm not freezing to death. You know, it's... Not a big deal. I, actually, today was actually very nice. I, I was I was okay. I never even put on my glo my gloves this, this morning. Um, it was it was very cool. Um, but we did get a chance to go down to was it Cave of the Winds? Yeah, Cave of the Winds. We went down there, which I'd never been to before, and that was really neat. Um, so I want to try and give you let's see a video. Um, let's see if this share screen thing is going to work. Uh, and movies, TV. Come on, you. Oh, share. There we go. Share. And so this is shot from. There, you seeing that? Is that coming out? Coming out okay? Okay, so that was from up from the walkway, looking down at the gulls right below us, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, we were also shooting pictures, uh, looking out across the river, you know, quarter mile away. But the wind was was blowing pretty good, so when I cranked the power up, everything got <laughs> the videos got really shaky we can just see how you know this this is the slr through the scope and that's yeah roughly about 12 1300 millimeters i don't think i cranked it up all that much i could have gotten individuals um let's see how we're going here so this is actually oh, it was a three minute long video let's see if i can scooch this along here uh yeah let's see yeah there we go and since since i was shooting with the camera i can i can control I can play with the zoom on the scope. I can also mess with my controls on the camera in terms of exposure and things like that. It's a little trickier being able to control the um, uh, the settings on the uh, cell phones than it is on the uh, on, on the SLRs. Okay, so there I just took took the took the camera off the scope, so you can see basically naked eye how big those birds were to us visually. And then I'm going to put the put the camera back on the scope again. And there we are. Now I'm gonna go over and play with some of the goals that were doing some baths. There we go. Play some bathing games. And the cool thing is with video, if you've ever got a really rare bird and you wanna get a picture of it to prove you saw what you said you saw, or even if you don't have any idea what the heck it is, shoot video, whether it's with a phone or whether it's with an SLR or whatever, because you can always stop an image anytime you want and be able to trap a frame if you're looking for that special, you know, axillary colors or, or underwing or, or whatever the heck. Uh, let's see here, let's go find another, uh, uh, oops. Nope, come on. Yeah. I'm gonna catch you in a good spot? No, I guess not. Yeah. Anyway, point being, videos are really great for doing a lot of stuff. Uh, and it's also just wonderful seeing behaviors, all kinds of cool behaviors. Yeah, there we go. All right, enough of that. Um, Jay, how are we doing on time? All right, um, how much more time to go? About 10 minutes, okay, cool. Um, that's pretty much it, I mean, you know, it's it's, Especially here, especially in the wintertime, <laughs> dress warmly, uh, have a system you can you can play with your gloves and all that. Um, the nice thing about Swarovski optic products is they're incredibly rugged, incredibly robust. Um, we've got people out at Sac Zim Bog in Minnesota right now at like 20 below zero looking at uh, great gray owls and their stuff, is, their, their binoculars are working fine. Other people's binoculars and, and cameras are not. Um, but you know that's that's you know for a twenty five hundred dollar binocular you would hope that it's going to work in twenty below zero and one hundred and ten degrees in Death Valley or wherever you're going to be because birders go everywhere we we see a lot of stuff we put our we put our equipment through quite a bit actually we're we're actually rougher on our equipment than the hunters are believe it or not not because we're we're inherently we take less care of them it's just that we use them every day. You know, a birder wouldn't go out of the house without his binocular because 
you know Murphy's Law says you leave the house without the binocular, that's when something really good flies by you or perches in front of you and you don't have the binocular to look at. So anyway, um, glad to be here. Like I said, um, my first time, well, my first time back here to the gorge since 1999 to the uh, North American Bell Conference, which was a very cool, cool event. Um, and uh, wonderful to be here. Hopefully you all see me on Friday and Saturday and come on out. And we're looking forward to 2023 when we can all go face to face and ha have, a, have an exhibit area and, uh, uh, you know, really do a, a good bang up bird festival. Because this is really cool. There's not a lot of really good bird festivals in the cold weather uh, times and places. So I'm hoping that uh, Birds on the Niagara is going to really take off and be great for years to come. So uh, I think I'm just about set, Jay. Yes? Cool. All right, everybody. Um, dress warmly. Bring your toys. Bring your binoculars. Bring your cameras. Especially bring your SLR cameras. Uh, you know, I've got my, my other camera here with the uh, essentially a 300 millimeter lens. And a 300 lens is nice for birds, but they've got to be really close. 3,000 millimeter lens, that's a lot better. So, um, you know, if you're not a scope person, come on over and play with a scope. I'll show you how they work. And I guarantee you, you're going to really, really love it. So thanks for having me. And I will see you guys uh, hopefully out on the gorge and hopefully in 2023 face to face. <laughs>